Hello and welcome my nimble parasites, how you doing today? Super John Bombo here and this is my review of Kingdom Rush Frontiers for the Switch. I'm going to break this video down into six parts that I think you guys will find interesting. First of all, what is this? The art of the game, the strategy of the game, design of the game, the gameplay, which I think is the most important aspect, we're going to get to that near the end, and then the replayability, which is somewhat important to some people. But to start off, we, had, we have to ask ourselves, what is Kingdom Rush Frontiers for the Switch? What you have to understand is that if you already have Kingdom Rush Frontiers for Steam and or mobile, it's roughly the same game. Almost entirely the same game, besides the fact that if you've got this on mobile, you get all of the heroes now for free, which is kind of nice. But you do have to unlock them over time. They're not just free right from the get-go. You can't use all of the heroes until you sort of play through the game and unlock them um, as you move on through the game. Once you beat the entire campaign, which is 15 levels here, you can still go back and play Heroic and Iron Challenges. Uh, you can unlock and upgrade new heroes. You can get new upgrades that you already can get better towers with. You can play uh, play around and check out the encyclopedia, which will show you all the different upgrades for your towers. Get some achievements going up in here if you're really interested in doing a 100% run through here as well. And then after that, you still have some new extra levels uh, that they have as added campaigns to the game as well. For example, three new levels with this uh, the kind of water campaign in the islands. You've got three extra levels for a Halloween campaign starting in Bonesburg. And then if I'm not mistaken, I, I, I it might be three more levels with Dark Light Depths, but I'm honestly not sure if it's three levels or just one level. I think it's just one new level with Dark Light Depths over here. So seven new campaign levels for you to play with over here as well, on top of the Heroic and Iron Challenges for each of those as well. So that's what the game is. Next, let's talk about the artwork. How does the game look? This is pretty fast and easy to understand. It looks amazing. From the special pop-ups that you only see for three seconds, to the units, to the backgrounds, to the towers to the special things that you wouldn't think are important at all, like the chickens in the top up there, or the random tires sitting on the bottom down there. Everything it just looks freaking great. The way the towers shoot look great. The way the rain, rain of fire falls looks great. Now keep in mind, this isn't fully uh, HD 1 million percent perfection. You can see the pixels on the, the, the pores on the nose. We're not talking about that, but everything looks exactly like you'd want it to. You can see exactly what kind of enemies you're dealing with. You can see what your towers are doing. Um, everything just looks fluid and amazing. And I got to say, out of everything in this game, the artwork is probably the best thing to see. On top of that, you can tell that uh, these enemies kind of walk and, and interact in different ways making it even more of an immersive gameplay interaction for yourself. Understanding how these enemies are going to attack and do things just makes it that much more entertaining to play this game. So as far as artwork is concerned, we're talking 10 out of frickin' 10, guys. I love it, and I think you will too. And you're going to see, obviously, a lot more eye candy as we play through this game. Next, we get to talk about strategy. Now, this is something that's important to me because this is a tower defense game. The strategy of the game should be very fluid, uh, understandable, uh, interesting, and uh, be somewhat easy to figure out, but be somewhat difficult to master. And I think Kingdom Rush does a really good job of this. Uh, it's difficult because you have to deal with so many different enemies, which we'll talk about design in just a second here, and that kind of interacts with each other, just strategy and design. But the design of the game is just so wonderful. Um, uh, we'll get to that in a second. But the strategy of the game is so wonderful as well because it makes us have to pay attention to all the different enemies and actually understand them, see what they are, know how they work, and know what to do to deal with them. For example, Myrmidon, we don't want to put units in front of them because they'll eat them and regain health. So we have to deal with all these enemies in different ways. Some guys are just somewhat tanky. Some will give auras of magic resistance or, or of armor. Some will, uh, you know, shoot you from a distance while other guys just sort of tank. There's so many different ways that these guys work together that uh, make this game just really, really fun. But of course, we have to talk about our towers as well. Now, there's four different towers in the game, which may seem like not that many, but they're fairly diverse in those four towers that exist. You've got a an archer tower that can throw uh, that can be upgraded. Obviously, all, all the towers can be upgraded. Uh, you've got a magic tower, 
You've got an artillery tower, which does mostly grouped damage. And then you've got a barracks tower for sort of stalling units or making units pop out of the ground so you can finally actually attack them. And with all four of these towers, what you have to keep in mind is with the strategy of the game, it gets really interesting because this is one of the only tower defense games that I, I personally play that don't allow you to target with your towers. You are forced to attack the first unit with your tower in all situations. So it makes the strategy sort of revolve around that aspect. You have to actually plan out that my tower cannot attack the unit that I want it to attack. It's just going to start attacking. You have to work around that negative. And that's what makes the strategy so somewhat fun, actually. Uh, it's different, but I really enjoy it. Um, it makes the, uh, the enemies just feel that much more unique and interesting and more difficult to deal with because I really have to use my towers in a specific, strategized way to make them do a better job for myself. So as far as strategy goes, again, very, very fun. The only negative as far as strategy is concerned for me is that I found that uh, a couple towers end up being somewhat overpowered. Um, plus, uh... And for me, I, it's most of the Bombard Towers, a little bit on the magic side as well. Those are my two favorite towers in the game. And if you can, you, you can usually just beat almost the entirety of the game using mostly magic and artillery just sort of in the middle of the map. Uh, and that somewhat sucks the fun out of the game. That, on top of you only unlock some towers almost three-fourths of the way through the entirety of the game. So you're really limited in strategy for a lot of the early part of the game, and I understand that you have to sort of ease people into the game, but at the same time, it almost feels like it sort of sucks away a little bit of the strategy, or sucks away a little bit of the fun in the beginning part of the game. I want to be able to do more stuff, and I feel uh, like the game is hurting me, rather than helping me, and stopping me from being able to do the things that I want to do to to, to play the game in a better, more strategic, and fun way for myself. And that, to me, is a somewhat negative of the game. I would rather have more towers get unlocked faster so I can play with the full abilities of the game at my disposal and use my full strategy to beat these stupid enemies, right? We gotta kill them. Gotta kill them. So next is design, and this is, again, very similar to strategy, but the design of the game is wonderful. Every single enemy feels unique, interesting, fun. They work in mysterious and interesting ways that you sometimes have to understand how they work with other ta other heroes or other enemies as well to work together. So you got to make sure that you're actually doing um, sort of, uh, I guess... I guess maybe just paying attention to exactly what's going on in the game to make sure everything actually works the way you want it to. Um, and again, with the towers as well, they are just fun to play with. Archer towers do arching. Magic towers can end up getting different types of abilities on top of their last upgrades. Artillery towers can end up working in uh, a very, very interesting ways, even getting these things called wasp missiles that shoot out uh, and hit enemies anywhere on the entire screen. It's a weird, interesting design choice that just makes them more fun to play with. Having to deal with flying units makes the design of the game even more interesting, because usually the weaknesses of artillery is flying units. You can't deal with flying units very well at all, so you're going to have to deal with them in some other way, with magic and archers, and not even with barracks, just magic and archers, and that can be difficult to deal with. So overall, the design of the game, again, quite good. But, here's where I run into some issues. Gameplay. Now, all the things that I've been talking about are very similar between uh, the mobile version, the Steam version, and the Switch version. But what's different is the gameplay. How does it play on the Switch? Now, this is a difficult question for me to answer because... I feel almost bad in that I'm somewhat biased. That I'm, I'm, I've had a bad experience on the, on the Switch so far. Um, but I want to give you guys my experience. First and foremost, I played through the game, beat eight levels. My Switch had a quote-unquote update, and it deleted my game file. The game didn't get saved for me. So that was really, really upsetting for me. I had to replay all eight of those levels, all ten of those levels, 
just to get back to where I was. Sort of wasting my time doing that when I felt like I just beat these. I shouldn't have to replay it again. So, on that aspect, maybe it's a complete rare and uh, kind of crazy thing that doesn't normally happen, but it happened to me. So that was a negative for me. That, on top of, I play with the controllers. This is sort of a weird way to play the game. You can play uh, a couple different ways. You can play with the two Switch controllers in your hand um, while you have it on your TV or on a monitor or something like that. And with that, what you have to do is you have to move, uh, move around between different towers by pressing left, right, up, and down. It'll sort of just go to a tower. You don't have a mouse wheel or something like that or a mouse pointer that you can go through and, and pick things unless you press the rain of fire or the reinforcements. And to me, this was fairly difficult to work out. It just didn't end up working out uh, the way I really wanted to. Um... It was difficult to get used to, it was it was sort of tough to get used to, and even after I felt like I was used to it, I still felt like it was a negative. So it was difficult to, to make it all work for myself. I would much prefer a mouse, or much prefer a, a, a touch screen. Now, I also played using the Switch uh, controllers plugged in to the Switch itself, uh, while the Switch could also be used as sort of like a mobile device, where you can touch screen it as well and it felt really clunky to me because I felt like I should be playing with the controllers but every once in a while I was supposed to also touch the screen when I wanted to do things like put reinforcements down or something like that it felt really clunky and almost unusable I would rather play the switch as a complete mobile device without any controllers at all but it just felt even goofier because the switch isn't designed to be held that way so as far as just the switch um, feeling while playing this game, it, I did not have the greatest experience. Now, it wasn't horrible. It wasn't terrible. But I did not have the greatest experience of all time. I felt like it just could have been better. On top of that, one thing you have to keep in mind is that the controller, the way they work, is that when you use reinforcements or rain of fire, they're sort of uh, down on the left bottom side of your controller stick. And it's very difficult to press that button and then get back and aim to where you want to throw them down and get everything to kind of work together. So I ended, up, I ended up finding that the gameplay itself ended up being a little bit of a struggle to get it going. Um, there wasn't that much lag, but there was also a little bit of lag while I was playing this game. Uh, mostly near the end of the game when I had a lot of wasp missiles happening, or when there was a lot of guys getting revived by the tricksters. Those two things ended up making my game lag a little bit, and it was only for a few moments at a time, but it still did end up messing with me a little bit. So as far as gameplay goes, I don't know what to tell you guys. All I can tell you is that I had a somewhat bad experience on the Switch. Um, I, I did... I was forced, by the way, to play on my monitor with my two controllers in my hand while playing this game. So you might have a better experience if you're very used to playing a combination of both controller-switch combo or just playing uh, as a Switch mobile device. I usually play my Switch on my TV, though. I should mention that. So maybe I'm biased in that as well, and just not experienced enough to be able to play the mobile game properly. But I did not have a good experience with that. I would much rather play on my computer or on my iPad or my phone. Uh, full touchscreen or full mouse. Either way, I prefer that entirely. And last but not least, we have to talk about the replayability of the game. So, the game is actually quite long to play through. If you play through the entire campaign, just on a regular game mode, it's probably going to take you about 15 hours. If you play through the Heroic and Iron Challenges on top of that, probably close to 20 to 25 hours. Then if you play the extra campaigns on top of that, you're talking about almost 30 hours of gameplay here, uh, just to kind of get through the base of the game, and then you can go through and play it again on Veteran mode if you really want to go for a push or, or push yourself even higher. But 30 hours of gameplay for a $15 game seems like a very fair amount of money to pay for this game, if you're interested in it. Plus, you get to go back and play with all those extra free heroes uh, that sort of just add that extra oomph or extra funness to the game that you might not have had before. Uh, anyways, if you guys didn't end up enjoying this uh, this review for me, um, please press that like button. The last thing I want to do is I do want to say that uh, I love Kingdom Rush Frontiers. I think it's a fantastic game, and if this is your first jump into, absolutely 100% buy this game. It's great to play. It's a fun game. Looks good. Uh, the strategy's fun. The design of the game is good, but it doesn't play fantastic on the Switch. It plays okay, at best. And... If it's still your first experience, it's going to be a great one. I can promise you that. 
But if you've already got this game bought on a mobile device, or if you've already bought it on Steam, it may not be worth it to buy it again. Unless you're just a really, really big fan. In that case, feel free, jump on in and have some fun replaying the game and getting some nostalgia going for yourself, because this game is quite old at this point. Uh, if I had to rate the game as a whole, I would still give it close to a 9. I still felt like everything was so good about the game that the minor issues that I was having throughout uh, while playing on the Switch don't really harm it that much. But I did want to throw it out there and let you guys know that I've had those experiences. Again, if you guys enjoyed, press that like button for me, subscribe if you haven't, and of course, have a super duper delicious day.